Hello. In this video tutorial for the code.org app lab environment, you're going to learn how to take a list and output it in a nicely formatted way onto the screen here. This lesson uses the text mode. However, if you want to learn how to do it in the block mode, click on the link in the video description or click on the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Let's start by going to the design mode. We're going to need to add an element where we're going to put the output of the formatted array. We have two choices. We can either use a label or we can use a text area. I prefer to use a text area because that way if there's not enough room it'll create a scroll bar where we can scroll down and look at the missing data. So I'm going to take a text area here. Let's close up that and let's look at the details. Put the text area right down there. I'm going to give it an ID. So I'm going to say txt array output. I can resize it however I want. I'm going to click and drag here. I can also manually resize it by changing the width and height. An important thing I want to do if I am doing a text area is I want to make it read only. Because a text area can also take user input. However, for this purpose, we only want output. So we're clicking read only so the program user can't change the values in here. One more change I'm going to make. I'm going to change the font from Arial to Arial Black, so it'll be a little easier to read. Now let's go back to code. Let's start by creating a array. So we'll say variable numbers. I'm just going to make an array with some random numbers. Sometimes you'll hear me use the term array. Sometimes you'll hear me use the term list. And that's because an array is a type of list, and it's the type of list we're using in AppLab. However, the curriculum material will probably refer to it as a list. It's just when I say array, I'm being a little more specific about the type of list we're using. Next, what we have to do is we have to convert this into a formatted string. So I'm going to say var, and I'm going to say numbers formatted. I'm going to set it equal to numbers dot join because I want to join all these individual values into a string and then inside the parentheses I'm going to say quote unquote and I'm going to say backslash n and that means when it joins them into a single string it's going to put a backslash n in between each of them and a backslash n just means it's going to go down to the next line so that way each element will be on its own line. Make sure you use the backslash instead of the forward slash. The backslash is over the enter key. The forward slash is to the left of the shift key. And I'm going to end with a semicolon. Finally, I'm going to say set text. Open close parentheses. The first value is the element ID. So let's move the cursor here. It was txt array output. If you can't see the whole thing, you can always go back to the design mode. So inside the parentheses, inside quotation marks, I'm going to say txt array output. It's the name of the element, then a comma, then the name of the value we are going to set the text to. So in this case, I want to use the variable numbers formatted. Numbers formatted. And then end with a semicolon. Since this is a variable, I don't want quotation marks. If I put quotation marks around numbers formatted, it would literally put the word numbers formatted here. But in this case, it's going to put the value that the numbers formatted variable is set to. So I'm going to run this program, so shrink it a little bit, and I'm going to say run. And there we go. We can see all the values there. Let's add a few more values to the array. So that way we can see the scroll bar in the text area. In this case, I'm going to add some strings, so it'll be inside quotation marks. Hello, by Apple Cat. So let's reset this and run it again. And there you go. We can see there's not enough room, so we can use our scroll bar to move up and down and see the rest of the data. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and then leave me a comment down below. To see the next video, click on the image on the left side of the screen. To see the entire playlist for the series, click on the image on the right side of the screen. And to keep up to date on all the latest content, hit the subscribe button in the middle.